as we can. Uh, we're going to welcome him to Hamilton and we're going to take some questions, guys. Uh, if you're close, I'll kind of pass you the mic. If not, if you're in the back, yell it to me. I'll repeat it to him and for the entire audience to hear. So we're going to start on this side over here, guys. All right. Does anybody over here have any questions? First, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Let, let, me, right. let, me exp let me talk a little bit here okay. to save you guys some questions. Okay? All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Um, first of all, my name is Jason Dave Frank. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Um, couple things before you guys ask questions that I can help you all. Lots of y'all gonna ask questions about, I, I sound like I'm from Texas, darn it. Um, a lot of you guys are probably gonna ask questions about the movie. I know some of you guys have questions. I don't know too much about the movie right now. There are certain articles all over the place. Don't believe what you read. Let's just all see what happens in March 2017 when the Power Ranger movie is released. Um, with that said, too, I have My Morphin' Life already filmed season four. That's going to go back to YouTube because it's kind of hard for international links and stuff like that on Con TV. Um, and it was just announced yesterday that I'm playing Bloodshot in the new uh, Valiant series that they're shooting, which is really exciting. Um, which is actually the first. I didn't know they were going to put it yesterday to promote it yesterday, so this is actually the first. Q&A that I can talk a little bit about it, not too much still, because we're releasing it in New York Comic Con with a pretty huge cast. Um, so I'm a little limited to what I can talk about, but I, you can ask questions about that as well. Um, and that's that's why I just want to do a little introduction before we get started to that. And uh, thank you for having me here. This is the first time at Hamilton Comic Con. I'm going to go up. And uh, very excited. <laughs> And these guys sure know how to take care of fans. Chris, the promoter, is a friend of mine. And uh, I went to Niagara Falls several years ago. I forgot how long ago. I had three. Had she a little knows. issues with Canada back in the days, just for a few border stuff. Uh -huh. But it's all worked out now, so I'm here. And I'm excited about it. All right. All right, well, so we had a question over on this side. You can come on in. I feel like this guy might be a fan. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, in the movie, you say White Tiger. Like as a morph, but you never did it again. Like I've just, they've been bugging me for years. <laughs> you know, now you're gonna bug me for years because I've I never realized that till right now. And I'm wondering myself why too. So in the movie I said White Tiger, White Tiger Zord, <laughs> and on the TV series it's just Tiger Zord. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're trying to make it clear that I was white. <laughs> <laughs> So inclusive, very yeah. inclusive. <laughs> uh, we'll take one over on this side, guys. All right. A question: A lot of the um, other actors have said you were the biggest prankster on the show. Who is your favorite person to prank, and why? David Ghost. Uh, who's my favorite person to prank? Let's see. Let's see, Dave's available to talk. <laughs> Oh gosh, too bad that he knew about that. I know, I said too bad he knew about that. <laughs> um, let me see what he says, where he's at. Dave Yost, we're good, good friends, always talk to each other. Um, what, I, what I like about Dave and Johnny, I talk to Johnny all the time too, is that we just talk about whatever, you know? We're just like friends, like we don't, we don't really care if I'm over here and he's over there and there's no pressure of like, hey, when are we gonna come together? It's like our schedules are just super crazy. You know, there's a lot of times I travel alone. There's a lot of times I travel with other people and then I have 90 other Rangers calling me and asking me how come, how come. The simple point that I, I like about, let me see, uh, I'll tell them five minutes. Um, and then you can record me talking to Dave in the crowd then I can give it to him for us, yeah? Um, yeah. I was saying, you know, five, six years ago, I was doing these cons pretty much alone when Comic Cons didn't exist. And as you can see, everyone's thinking like, whoa, Comic Cons, this is a big thing. And everyone's doing Comic Cons now. I've been loyal to the brand from day one. I went back to Dino Thunder when everyone said Power Rangers. Yeah, but back then everyone said, oh, Dino, you know, Power Rangers still exists. And 
I was like, yeah, man. So I went through all the, the, the trials of the Power Rangers and, you know, I was loyal to the brand. I went back to Super Mega Force no, not knowing that they're doing a Power Ranger movie. I turned the dark Power Ranger movie down when that director called and said, hey, please do this, which was his skill on the fan film was great. Great movie maker. Um, it just was a little too bloody. Four Power Rangers. For, for the Power Rangers, Tommy. Bloodshot, I can I can shoot people and cut people up, but that's Bloodshot. But I mean, as far as Power Rangers, it was a little too too violent for me, so I said no to that. And then then the movie came out, and then all this other stuff, and Saban realized, hey, I'm so loyal to them, going through the ups and the downs. And as you can see now, like, everybody's doing Comic-Cons now. You're like, wow, you know? And um, it's cool, but I still do these things for fun. Um, you know, you can either get stuff at the table, you don't. I want to make people happy. I don't charge for the Q&As. I, I certainly don't get a, a fee coming here. I refuse that because I don't want to feel uh, forced to be here. And I think the promoters realize that, and I realize I can do what I want. No promoter is going to get mad at me for giving a free picture or doing whatever I want to do. So that's the first thing. Um, and uh, so with Dave Yost was probably uh, the funniest guy to prank, but I don't want to talk about the sandwich with him, but let's see what he talks about. Let's give him a call. Let me call him first before he says something on speaker. <laughs> An exclusive Hamilton Comic Con phone call, guys. Give it up for that, right? Woo! Yeah. Feeling it. And I'm hoping I can get the reception, because it does show me that I have full bars. It is ringing. We're by the airport. We should be fine. Hey, what's up, buddy? Probably not. I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I got a lot of people here. Full, uh, full bunch of people, so just uh, I'll put you on speaker real quick. Say hi to Dave Yost, everybody. Woo! Dave, I'm also recording this for you, but uh, I was just telling people that we're good friends and I love working with you. Does anybody have a question for Mr. David Yost? First, Dave, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody, how you doing? I hope you're having a good time with uh, Jason, David, Frank, and Hamilton at Hamilton Comic Con. Wish I was there. Yep. We, we definitely wish you were here, too. I know you were here the first year. Maybe we can do something, because I love doing shows with you and stuff like that. But uh, anybody have one specific question? Because he's a busy man. He's got to go. Very quickly. Anyone? Anybody? Yes. Uh, I guess yell it. You're going to have to yell it. All right. Oh, thank you. He said he's a huge fan <laughs> of us, Dave. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> not really a question, but that's yeah, good. Not really a question, but anyway, guys. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not too sure. I don't, I'll get. I'll answer that question in just a second. But um, anyway, Dave, say goodbye to everybody. All right, bye. You guys have a good day. All right. Thank you, guys. David Yost, everybody. David Thanks. Yost at a Hamilton Comic Con phone call. call. All right. All right. Awesome. I'm going to do with a Bruce Lee something. Okay. okay, bye. All right. Guys, I said ask questions for David Yost. He's on yeah. the phone, and you asked me questions about Tommy, and you asked me <laughs> questions about Tommy. Man. He's trying to get David mad. some questions. All right. So, your question but it's just more of a statement. You had a question if... If Lord Zed created Bruce Lee, if I was Bruce Lee Urkel. Why don't we give him the microphone? What, yeah. I mean, Francis, what is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Urkel beat me up. I got you. <laughs> Bruce Lee Urkel. Ah, I got you, what you're saying. We're skipping, uh, we're skipping genres. We're going from Power Rangers <laughs> to Family Matters. All right, I understand now. It's a Comic-Con crossover, guys. Uh, the crossover, the, the mashup. We're going to take a question from this side if you want to take one. If one of you guys want to come up, come on up. Yeah, don't, okay. Hi there. With the uh, recent um, uh, USC fight involving CM Punk, uh, have you got a response from him yet? No, I didn't. I, I haven't got a response to CM Punk. I, you know, man, that is uh, it would have been a better fight with me and him. It probably would have went down the same way, but at least it would have been like, 
much. No, it would have. I know it would have. But at least it would have been cool for the genre. I would have stretched it out a little bit, you know, like, come on, get up. Okay, cool. They all, you know, <laughs> give the fans a little bit more excitement because I know I would win. But the thing is, everyone's saying that they're proud of them for going into it. I say I am too, but you got to start from the bottom where you belong. Amateur fighting first. I fought amateur fighting. I'm no better than anyone else. You got to work your way up the ladder. And um, that's what you need to do in life. Doesn't You're, you're never too good to, you know, I, I tell everyone, hey, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. If you have to work at, like, wherever you have to work. You know, if you have to, like, be a poop scooper or work at McDonald's. I tell you what, if I was a poop scooper, I'm going to be the best in the business. I'll probably hire people to pick up the poop, and I don't need to pick up the poop. That's the way that I'll do it. But you got to start somewhere. Sometimes people think they're too good to do something, and I'm not like that. My, my, my philosophy is you're never better than anyone else. That's why Instagram and Facebook and everything else, I don't, I don't hide the fact that I have emotions. Instagram is always perfect, but you know we all have issues and we all have problems. And if we say we don't, we're probably lying. Yes, I, I'm a follower in God. Yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I've sinned. Yes, we sin every single day. That's what I, I like being real, that we're trying to be better. It's not, a, it's a transformation and trying to be better and not perfect, but it's, you know, it, you're just you're just working it. And um, I deal with, you know, a lot of things, my mind, different ADD, all that other stuff. So I try to be real with people and try not to sit up here and think that I'm better than everyone else. And now that you're all growing up, I put my Green Ranger suit on just like, you one leg at a time i don't know uh, just morph into the suit it's uh it's a struggle and uh it's the comic-con cosplay struggle that uh we all go through so uh and that i just say it start your way from the bottom and work your way to the top like everyone else don't think you're better and just go to the top because if you do it's exactly what's going to happen to him that's all so. positive message here at hamilton comic-con yeah you, you can either come up or yell or doing good Yeah, I, um, I'm gonna be up for my eighth degree pretty soon, but I, uh, I, I upped all my, my current instructors that have been with me. Um, just wanted to up them and rank a little bit. They've been with me for a very long time. They do really great uh, with the schools, and it's an honor to, to bring people up and rank, but you also know that you get a little older when you have like fifth degrees coming up underneath you. So I moved them all up, and I'll be up and uh, coming up in rank two. And trust me, I got a lot of texts on here from Bellator matchmakers and other people that would probably be smart enough to take a fight like that. I still would love to fight CM Punk. I, I think it would be fun, but there's other people out there as well. And um, I'm not looking to go out there and be like, I've already, I've already had seven fights. I've already, I'm, I've never lost. I don't want to know what it feels like to lose, to lose. But you know, sometimes you do. And when you do, you fall and pick yourself right back up and keep striving to be the best you can. You know, um, especially in the fighting industry, there's something that you, you, UFC, you strive, you want to be there as a fighter. You know, you have 40 fights, 40 amateur, and so UFC is one of those things that's like, wow, that's something I strive to be, not just going in with nothing and no experience and stuff. So there's other places out there like Bellator and other, other places in Japan, I'm talking to a few, just for fun. I like doing things for fun. If it's not fun for me anymore, then I don't want to go. And I don't want to do it. That's why when promoters ask me to come, I don't want to get paid in the parents' fee because it becomes work. I don't want to work. I want to still try to have fun at Comic Cons. And I really do. That's why I like, you know, the cos. First of all, I give it up to all the cosplayers. Give them a big hand for dressing up. Dressing up. Looking good. You might not want to, but you know you look at cosplayers and be like, oh, yeah, there's Spider Man. I wonder what he is. They, they make it fun and interesting, and they sacrifice themselves by. Sometimes, you know, wearing helmets all around or really, oh, you know, hard. putting too it hard. on for everyone else, especially for the little kids. There was a Batman behind me the other day at the hotel checking in, and the little kid's like, whoa, Batman, can I take a picture with them? And, you know, so so it's cool that you can come up, dress up, and take pictures for little kids. And I did a school the other day called the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, 
And I don't know if you saw my Instagram, those kids went nuts. I, I went, it felt like I went back 20 years ago. I came out in the fifth, sixth, seventh grade, the eighth graders almost knocked me over by just flooding me like, whoa, and I was like, wow, little kids are watching the show. We have generations after generations because the parents are training them, hey, this is what's the best. You know, shut up, sit down, and watch it. And then they like it. And that's the best kind of parenting. Uh, yeah, you. No, we were going to do that for an episode of My Morphin Life. Um, I do have a full Spider-Man suit here that, you know, I was thinking about it, walking around. So the next time you see a Spider-Man, you'll be like, JDF? No, it's not. Um, <laughs> never know. I, I want to do that for an episode of My Morphin Life, you know. And uh, we're just trying to figure out how we can do that without, like, having camera crews around and stuff like that. But I, I still would like to do that one day. Um, but I, I do walk around. I have walked around. Comic cons before out of costume, and before the show started, and a lot, a lot of some vendors don't realize that I'm over there looking or taking pictures, and you know vendors are like, don't take picture of that and don't touch that sword, and okay, I'll walk away, and they're like, oh that's JDF, man, let him take. I was like, nah, I don't want to anymore. Like, I just want to be treated like everyone else. That's the way you treat everyone. That is, that's the way you treat everyone. Um, you know, so and sometimes I go into stores and you know they're putting stuff on the shelf or. I'm really big into customer service, like I really am. Like I believe if you go somewhere, it's you know it's customer service, like eye contact. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I missed up your order. Don't worry, I'm gonna cop your whole order and I'm gonna give you a, a complimentary, you know, gift card. So next time you come back, you can enjoy dinner. We don't want to lose your business, that type of guy. Um, and you go into places and people are stocking shelves and there. You're just being a regular guy saying, hey, where's the Gatorade over there? You know. Blah, 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 blah. Then they make eye contact. Oh, hey, JDF. Oh, wow. You know, it's kind of like, man, if you if you did your normal job and said, how are you doing today, sir? Is there anything I can help you with? Maybe you realize who's standing in front of you, and it doesn't matter if it's me or someone else. It's just the point of treating people, right? And uh, so I was a little afraid if I did dress up as the Green Ranger, I might have experienced a little bit of that. And I would have been like, take my helmet off and been like, it's really me. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry, you know. So, I, one day, I'll, and I got the cool costumes to do it, you know, so. But mine are too legit. That's what I'm afraid of. Um, and, oh, we, we have, have a question from over no? uh, no. you guys We have a question over here. Yeah, okay. Here. Like, you guys have some, we'll come over here, maybe like three people over here. Yeah. Sorry to keep you awake. And then over here, okay. Yeah, we have I've a got question one. Spider-Man. Yeah. Lined up. First of all, I miss your long hair. <laughs> Thank you. I had long hair for the longest time. Even a couple, what, a year ago or something like that? Uh -oh. But he, he makes up, look at his hair. You so, anyway, uh, for the Bruce Lee Urkel episode you were in, your character's name was Skull. Was that a reference to Vulcan Skull? Uh, I don't know, but I don't think you guys, you guys realize the guy that was the leader of the Piranhas, he was in Power Rangers. Yeah, you have to look him up. He was on Power Rangers. And he did, I think he, he wasn't a ranger, he played, I think the bad, maybe he played a bad ranger or someone. You'll have to look up his name on the credits and then Google him and see where, but me and him worked together before on Power Rangers. And then we actually wrote a movie together called Stick Up Boys that we never, that we never completed. So we worked together and then Jeff Pruitt worked on that as a stunt guy. Jeff Pruitt also did all the Power Ranger stunts and things on Power Rangers. So when I went there, I was like, oh, I feel right at home, you know, working. So I don't know if it was a reference to Skull. I highly doubt it, but it was pretty cool. I liked it, you know? I got, Skull. I got the Toy Dragon Story at home, the one from 20 years ago, not the new yeah, one. Yeah, the, not the new one. The, well, the old school one with the with the missing parts. No, I got the whole <laughs> thing. Oh, the parts. All right. And, and I thought you were possessed by Rita again. Yeah. That, so. <laughs> yeah so Some again. of you guys can come over here, too, if you want to, you know, separate. Yeah, just come on over here and hang out with me. I just... Don't let the velvet laser, you know, scare you. Uh, you only even have though, about eight minutes left of the oh, panel, yeah. though. Yeah, so, so let's, uh, yeah, let's let's speed it up. So yeah. you, we'll get Thor, and then you, and then whoever else. Uh, I was just wondering, um, back when you were doing switching from Evil Green Ranger to I better answer it right. Get smashed <laughs> with a hammer. Uh, how did you get into try and get in character for both aspects, the Evil Green Ranger and the Good Green Ranger? How did I enjoy it, or how was it trained? Evil Green was really, really easy for me. That's like with, you know, Bloodshot, he's a villain and a superhero at the same time. 
and uh, you'll get to see some of my performance. I think in Bloodshot is like, hey, there's kind of evil Tommy there a little bit. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know. It was just I created Tommy kind of like myself, and being evil was pretty easy for me. And just you know, telling Kimberly like, you better watch. You know, it was like finally I could be like, shut up, but, but in a nice way. But I can blame it. It wasn't me, baby. I was hypnotized. I was, I was, I was evil. It was Rita's fault. All right. Don't hit me, please. Right. Very good. I gotta take this one over here. Yo, hey, what's going on, Jason? What's what you up? doing, man? Good, buddy. Um, yo, um, so I have a question for you. So you've been doing, um, what's called? You've been doing, um, martial arts for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know. I want to start martial arts. Where would I start? Um, well. You can go, like I always say, you go to a local dojo and try to find an instructor that can really relate to you, that you can really understand, that can pass the message to you. Um, I did a training program online, which is trainingjdf.com. Real simple understanding of what martial arts is, just a supplemental tool uh, that, to see if you have the discipline to train. And I started that because I used to train a kid that, that, I don't know if, that, I didn't know if he loved it or not, but I trained, uh, trained a kid. Uh, he did really good, and he ended up taking his life because he dealt with depression. And his mom called and said, hey, that's the only thing that he loved was that class. And I was like, I didn't really think he did, you know, because I couldn't really read him. So I started that class and dedicated the trainingjdf.com to that kid because it wasn't about karate. It was about connecting with himself and lift, listening to the positive messages and then finding a good school in your local area, you know. So, thank you. It took forever to figure out the name. Train me JDF. I know you guys. I know you guys think that's not hard, but it really did. I was thinking, and I was just like, train me, train me JDF. But it was a lot of work to put into it too. So, anyway. All right. We have time for about two more questions, I would say. Yeah. Oh, two. So I was wondering if we'll ever be seeing the Green Ranger or the White Ranger again in Bat in the Sun, and if other Rangers will be starting to some beatdowns as well. Um, Bad the Sun's been really busy full time with the Valiant program, and we're still working on uh, closing this Green Ranger uh, series that we're working on, like an original, you know, with Saban. We're still, that's not did yet. The, the Green Ranger series that we can interact and bring others back and forth, like like a Netflix type of show, as me as like Tommy now, you know. So we're still working on that, and we got a lot of projects. So I'm not too sure on that. Hey, okay, wonderful. Over here. All right, Jason. Andrew Robertson, Life of Under Dots Reach. Uh, first of all, big fan since the original days. And just have a question, well, a couple questions for you. First of all, wanted to know how your mom is doing. Uh, my own mom passed away of cancer back in February, so I know what you're going through. Yeah. Uh, I've been praying for you. Thank you. Um, but uh, also just want to know, um, how has your, your faith in Christ affected your career? I think it's, it's blessed my career. I feel my mom's doing better as best as she can. My mom has stage four cancer, like pretty much, you know, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, all that stuff. So she's doing the best she can. She's fighting. Uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen there, but the, I think I think God has made my career better because also my fans, accountability partners, you know, I try to be a superhero for you guys, someone to look up to. I used to drink, used to do all that stuff. I haven't in five years. I just There's things that I'm cleaning up in my life because I'm a superhero to you guys. So you don't see posts out there, me partying and doing that stuff, because I really don't. When that happens, I go home and I do social media. You know, I'm kind of like that, you know, maybe party pooper guy. But um, I try to be a role model and I try to, you know, I try to count my blessings doing good things for people that I can't remember, and that's the biggest thing for me, is that I'm not perfect. And I have one heck of a story to tell all of my fans, how I grew up and you know what I went through and stuff like that. But it needs to, I need to be completed, you know. It needs to be a good story, it needs to be completed with God, and it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard task. There's things that he's kicking out of my life little by little, and struggles and challenges, so I feel blessed. I mean, out of all the Rangers, Green Ranger to me is like the most popular, but the only reason is just because I think the passion behind the mask and the passion of 
getting back to y'all on social media, no admins. I try to do everything myself, um, and that's just something that I always will do, you know? Uh, I, thought you was, I thought you were taking a selfie of all of us back there. Just Did it. you get me in it? Just. Yeah? You got me in the shot? <laughs> all right, just checking. We have Tag me on Instagram. One quick, yeah. Yeah, we have time for one more question. So. Uh, hi, thanks for coming. I'm a big fan of the Green Ranger. I grew up with it. It was very inspirational. Uh, my question is about like the monsters that were on the show. Um, some of them seem to be very in very big like suits. Were there any particular challenges in doing martial arts with people that big? And uh, do you have any favorite uh, monsters from the show? Uh, yeah, the monster suits were hot and heavy for those guys. Um, I don't. It was harder for them to fight than it was for us to fight. But they were all. We had an alpha stunt team, a good Japanese stunt team that were mostly really skinny and all we smoked and uh, they would take their monster suits off like just just they would take them off and the monster suits would just kind of hang over and they'd be behind them like smoking suits, the monster suits just be like bouncing around and so Saban said no kids on set you know we don't want kids on set because they smoke and they got monster suits but they they're incredible with what they did so it was, it was the uh, Pudgy the Pig monsters like that it's just super awkward costumes for them, but they, they did amazing. It seems like those guys can do anything. It's like, put this on me, I can do a flip. I don't understand how, but they do. Really good stunt people. Guys, that's all the time we have here today. Please give it up one more time for Jamie oh. and Frank, everybody. Jamie M, the Green Ranger. Thank you guys so much. And uh, make sure you check him out at his, uh, his, his booth, guys. I think he's taking a big selfie. Yet, taking a selfie. One big selfie. Everyone get in it. Smile. All right, all you guys' awesome. eyes were closed, okay? Have a good day, everyone.